Hey guys, I'm Adam. I'm Ryan. And this is Two Neighbors. Ryan, yes. what do we got going on today? All right guys, so today is gonna be a fun one. This As is always. American Cops versus Canadian Cops. Oh, so gosh. I'm interested to see, hmm. guys. I think, uh, again, I don't wanna speak for Americans. I don't know what the perception overall of peace officers is in the United States. But peace I think officers. like we have a pretty good, like a pretty good rapport relationship with our, uh, our Canadian cops for the most part. I mean, I've had maybe in my life one, you know, less than positive experience with a police officer. Oh, I've had many. Um, <laughs> but you know, well, how many times did you my driving? Uh, Most. You can justify it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, you know what? I've had good experiences over the years, and um, I don't know. I mean, I've had some like times where I probably could have or should have gone to jail, but didn't. Mm -hmm. There's one in particular. Um, I might have told this story before. There's one in particular where I was basically <laughs> in a, I was in a park and we were with I was like 18 or 19. We were with these girls we met at a club the night before, and we decided to have some drinks in a park. Which days. It's a very Canadian thing. You go to a park and you have some drinks. You're not allowed to drink there, but you do. And there was like a bunch of other groups all drinking as well. And one of the other groups like ran out of alcohol and they wanted like some of ours. So some guys came over there being pretty aggressive about it, like give us some drinks. We're like, no, nah, like, you know, go away. So anyways, I'm sitting there, I got my beer in my hand, Molson Canadian, having a couple pops, and all of a sudden, the beer gets yanked out of my hand. So first instinct is, well, we got a Donnybrook now, right? So I turn around and I just drill the guy. Like, did I punch him, but I shoved him. And the guy falls to the ground, the beer goes fine. As he's falling to the Where's ground, the all I see is the police thing. <gasps> Honestly, I'm like, I just drilled a cop. Like, <laughs> this is bad. So it's funny, you know what? You don't know how you're gonna react in that situation. Before he was done falling to the ground and, and rolling, I was already on my knees and I put my yeah. hands on my head because I didn't know what else to do. So this guy jumps off, his partner comes running over. I explained the situation. They couldn't have been cooler guys. So I told them what happened. You know, that guy's over here like bugging us for beers. I so they're like, I'm shooting the shit now with these cops, right? So the cop comes over afterwards and talks to me. He's like, that guy who's bugging you because I just gave him a ticket for drinking in public. He goes, you guys are okay, but like, you know, wrap you're gonna, up. yeah, wrap it up, get out of here. So it's like, you know, that could have been a real bad situation. Yep. It wasn't, and uh, you know I've had good experience with a lot of cops over the years. So I don't know. I haven't had any. I haven't had any run-ins with uh, with American cops except for one when I was very young. My dad tells a story all the time. We were driving through Wisconsin, and we got pulled over by a state trooper, mm -hmm. and I was like really young. Um, the cops talking to my dad and out of nowhere I'm like, you have a gun to the cop, right? And the cop like looked at me and like just nodded. Yeah. I'm like, my dad has a gun. <laughs> he's dead. <dead. laughs> anyway, so the cop takes my dad out of the car. He's like, my dad's like, I have never owned a gun in my entire life. My son has a vivid imagination. Anyways, he, he thought it was funny. He let us go, and, you know, so yeah. That's hilarious. That's a good one. Yeah. I've had a couple run-ins, you know, with uh, speeding and whatnot, but never anything really serious. I do know that uh, and a few of my friends have experienced this one when, when they head down to like Florida. I can't remember what state it's in, but uh, they Florida's Florida's in Florida. No, 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 no. <laughs> On their way down to Florida, uh, going through one of the states, um, I think it's Georgia. They like, there's a specific area, but they like nail Canadians. They look for <laughs> Ontario plates and just like pull them over no matter what, because they're not going to fight the ticket. I probably would too. Yeah, well, anyways, <laughs> but uh, good story, Ryan. You literally pushed over a cop. Yeah, um, <laughs> and got away with it too. Before we start this guys, please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel Two Neighbors. It takes two seconds. And if you uh, don't mind, turn on the little bell for notifications because we post videos every single day and you don't want to miss all the action. Uh, and also please check out okanaswag.com. Punch in Two Neighbors in the coupon code at checkout and you'll receive 20% off your whole order plus free shipping and pay no tax. Get yourself some sweet Canadian swag a lot of cool designs, and uh, yeah, check it out. All right, so without further ado, guys, now we'll see what this is. Now let's about. see what this is all about. Uh, American cops versus Canadian cops. 
The USA has long been called the land of opportunity, but there are many people these days that will tell you the American dream has for a long time been less of a reality. Canada, on the other, is often depicted as an easier place to have an existence. It's a country with far less of a divide between the rich and poor, and you'll still find it on best quality of life lists somewhere in the top 10. At the same time, the USA makes headlines for such things as having worryingly high crime rates for a developed nation, incredibly high incarceration rates, and a healthcare system system that might bankrupt its own citizens. We might be being harsh here, and we certainly might? aren't saying Canada is a utopia. Alright, so you want to be a cop in Pretty the cool. USA. You've done your research, meaning you've seen The Wire, watched all episodes <laughs> of NYPD Blue, and even stayed up late to watch reruns of Columbo and Cagney and Lacey. You are basically ready to hit the streets, right? Well, we should tell you a few things about what you need to do to become a police officer in America. The good news is that you don't have to be a genius to land the job. It's open to most people, so long as you have some brain power and didn't spend your teens doing hits for the Mexican Mafia. You can get a law enforcement degree, and this should land you better jobs, but you can also apply to be a cop after high school. So to get in, you'll need a high school diploma or a GED, which is considered equal to that diploma. After that, you'll be interviewed and have background checks. If you have a minor offense, you may still get in. You may not have to be super fit, but you'll likely have to be relatively fit. Once you get into the academy, you'll have to pass some kind of entrance exam, such as the law enforcement examination. Then you'll start your training. You'll also have to pass a fitness test or the police physical fitness abilities test. These tests can change depending on where you're training, but you'll mostly have to show you can sprint reasonably fast and able to run one and a half miles in anywhere from 16 to 20 minutes. But you'll have to show your strength by doing a fairly tricky obstacle course. And on top of that, you'll have to do around 20 push-ups in one minute and 30 sit-ups in one minute. As we said, this can change depending on the academy. And then never do it again. Let's just say you have to be fairly fit to pass, but by no means have to be an exceptional athlete. Training will last around 30 weeks, and even after you've passed, you'll be put on probation for up to 18 months at the department where you'll be working. Over in Canada, you can also start training at age 18, but you cannot hit the streets until you're 19. You'll also need a high school diploma or the equivalent, and during the interview process, you'll have to show good health, both mental and physical. On its website, the RCMP says, turning up to the interview looking like you've done nothing but eat donuts and played Grand Theft Auto throughout high school will put you at a distinct disadvantage. You'll also have to pass background checks, and again, a very small infraction in life may not mean you can't get in. Pass the interview, and off you'll go to training school for 26 weeks. Hmm. Yes, again, there will be written tests that should not challenge most who have done okay in high school. As for the fitness test, you'll need to do the physical abilities requirement evaluation. And that will consist of doing an obstacle course, push-ups and pull-ups, and a weighted carry, all under a time of 5 minutes and 30 seconds or less. And that's at the start of training. At the end, you'll have to be able to do that same test in less than 4 minutes. So now you're in the force, but what's it like? Well, first of all, how much are you being paid? The amount fluctuates across the USA, but Payscale in 2017 said the average was $44,000 a year for the wow. first zero to five years as a rookie cop. Other sites tell us the starting salary for most cops is closer to $30,000, and it will increase wow. by the year. That might go up to $50,000 between your 5th and your 10th year, but it depends on how well you do. Hmm. Where you are matters a lot, with sources telling us that the average wage for cops in California is considerably more than double the average for cops in Mississippi. As for Canada, you can check out the job site Indeed and see police officer positions with a yearly wage of around $60,000. After we converted them from Canadian dollars, Again, it depends on where you work, but Payscale tells us the average salary when you just join the force is around $37,000. <laughs> just like in the US, that can easily go up to $50,000 after a few years. It seems the wages for US cops and Canadian cops are not dramatically different, but which country would be better to work in? We're told that a big difference in policing is the fact that Canada has a federal criminal code. While in the U.S., things change from state to state. This means in Canada, training and procedures are the same all over, which can make life easier. One website tells us that in Canada, the money for police force comes from taxes, while in the U.S., part of the money comes from the tickets people have to pay. That website tells us that this has led to a stricter kind of policing in the U.S., as the force needs to make money. We're told in Canada they call it a police service, while in the U.S. it's called a police force. Canadians adopt a kind of community policing, while in the U.S. the cops are perhaps less part of their communities. Then there's the matter of higher crime rates in the U.S. We'll let an expert explain. Canadians often point to a single major difference between our two cultures as a starting point. Guns are far more easily available in the United States than in Canada. 
This environment leads to a tense situation for any police officer, yeah. no matter how polite he or she may wish to appear. <laughs> And this means the US police are not only in more danger, but tend to use a bit more force. We've all seen the videos of perhaps rather over-the-top policing. We might also say that officers are in some part of the US under tremendous stresses, given the number of guns on the street. We're told that US officers use lethal force about six times more than the average Canadian cop. Hmm. The Washington Post told us that in 2015, US police shot and killed close to 1,000 people, while in Canada, that number on average was about 15 people a year. Unless you're mentally unhinged, killing people is something you certainly don't want to do. And in the US, as a police officer, it's much more likely that you will. We're told that in 2018, according to the Officer Down Memorial page, 149 deaths of officers occurred in the line of duty. Most were shootings, but cops also perish in car crashes while performing their duties and other ways. Some deaths might just have been accidents, but we're told firearms were involved in most deaths. In comparison, the Canadian Broadcasting Association looked at the Canadian Police Memorial statistics and told us in 2018, since 1975, a total of 284 police officers have died on the job. Of these, 101 were homicide victims, while 88 were killed in vehicle accidents, often while rushing to respond to a call in poor road conditions. We can certainly say that officers in the US have the more dangerous job by a long way. So you're getting a similar wage, but have a more chance of killing someone and a more chance of being killed. You're also more likely to have to use force to adopt a more aggressive style of policing, all of which would likely make your job more stressful in the US. That stress is killing officers in the US, we're told. One study cited by Men's Health said the number of officers that took their own lives in 2016 was way more than those who were shot. There's not enough conversation about mental health within police and fire departments, said the study. It depends on where you are, of course. A recent study by the Department of Justice, for instance, said that the suicide rate in the Chicago Police Department was 60% higher than the U.S. average. Wow. One officer who worked for the Fresno Police Department said that over his 35-year career, he counted 14 of his colleagues that took their own lives wow. on the job. Apparently, getting the number of officers who do that after retiring is not easy to do. USA Today also reported in 2018 that more officers took their own lives, 148, than died in the line of duty. We can likely deduce that being a cop in the USA can be a very stressful job. In Canada in 2018, nine officers took their own lives. This was high compared to recent years. We might also add here that there are many more cops in the US than there are in Canada. Statistics tell us that there are about 70,000 police officers in Canada and almost 10 times that amount in the USA. Well, Other stats tell us the USA yeah. has considerably more officers per capita than Canada, but Canada has a lot less crime. We might also look at websites that list countries for the worst police brutality. And next to developed countries sometimes stands the USA. We're not going to go into all the reasons why this happens, but we might say that any chance of being part of such brutality might be said to have future negative consequences, not only for the victims, wow. but also the perpetrators. Even if they don't get caught, one day it's likely their actions will cause them some amount of unhappiness. Just reading various sites, it seems Canadians in general have more trust in their police. This no doubt makes their job Job easier. Psychology Today tells us this of US policing. Recent polls suggest that the majority of Americans do not feel that the police are adequately held accountable for their actions, treat racial groups equally, or use the right amount of force. In conclusion, with Canadian police being liked more by those they serve, the fact that they have less chance of being killed, the fact that they deal with less crime and likely suffer less trauma, and the fact that their wages are not too different than their counterparts in the US, we'd say being a cop in Canada is better. Did you find this video interesting? Check out our other video. Interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, I would want to be a cop in Canada compared to the US, that's for sure. Yeah. But that's not to say that we don't have a lot of problems in Canada when it comes to our policing. Yeah, there, I've seen I think some, there's problems anywhere. No, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, it, and yeah, I mean the scale of America is a lot greater than Canada. But I think they were going on a per capita basis. Um, but still, like they're, you know, it's scary. I mean, it's scary to be a cop in general, right? So yeah, I, I'd be interested to see. Like he talked a little bit about you know rookie cops and pay skills, but mm -hmm. I'd be interested to see. Like you know, he was talking about like five to ten year in the state. Like I know after five years, like 
police in in Canada like oh, certainly they make a lot more. They can, yeah they make a, oh, way yeah. more than that like you're approaching at that point close yeah. to six figures yeah. like you're in the high 90s into a hundred thousand yeah. dollars by that point so and you can actually even find out I guess in Canada you have to like it's public knowledge how much cops are making yeah yeah so they you can like look, all, yeah. yeah they publish yeah. it all which I thought is an interesting thing but yeah, yeah. I, I know cops that have been in the force for maybe six seven years and they're like well over 100k yeah Canadian. No, that's why so that's yeah, like 100,000 Canadian so like you 75 know. US yeah US yeah that's why US. I'm like and when I was saying like wow to like the American dollar then we said the Canadian I'm like that doesn't sound right like for yeah. Canadian but maybe but maybe on a rookie scale yeah and you know what I think you're factoring in there is like all of the country as he was saying like you know Mississippi gets paid less than California yeah. and we're looking at like GT or greater Toronto area gets paid more than maybe yeah. <clears throat> you know if you were like three hours north or something you might get paid less but maybe there's some Canadian police watching and they'd be kind Please enough let us know let us know down below you don't have to let us know exactly what you make but like a ballpark figure and thank you very much for uh, your service yes thank you absolutely um I, it sounded pretty low when they said it but interesting definitely you know learn some fact I you know I, I have uh as much as you hear like the bad press and all that stuff, like, you know, I have an immense amount of respect for police and what they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Absolutely. Certainly, you know, I think every child at some point thought, hey, you know, maybe I'll be a cop one day. I'm not cut out for a person. Yeah. I could never do it. Um, so, you know, thank you to all those that do. Absolutely. Uh, I think one thing that definitely needs to change in any cop system is like, uh, dealing with mental health issues. I think that's the biggest flaw in our system is like, you know, having a lot of cops, but there's no one like on the force that are like, you know, trained in talking to people who are going through mental challenges. And I think that's something that we really need to enforce uh, moving forward. I agree know? completely. And you know, in a lot of cases where people like police are responding to substance abuse issues, there's that underlying mental health. Cops are intimidating that, to those people. You yeah, know, they threaten sure. their lot. They threaten their. They they view cops as threatening their lives moving forward because they always run into the cops. You know, but if you ran into like you know someone from the government that helps you and encourages you, yeah. that that you know might segue it. Yeah. So well, I saw the most amazing thing in uh, New Jersey, I believe Pattison, New Jersey, some of you guys might know, I think Pattison, New Jersey, they basically, they had a lot of issues with the police. And there was a complete lack of trust with the community and a huge divide. So basically what they did was they more or less rebranded the police, retrained everyone, mm -hmm. and made them engage with the community, trained them in mental health awareness, um, you know, taught them to be proactive. And what happened? crime plummeted. I yeah. mean, there was that relationship built prior to the confrontation, okay? So it's like the people are dealing with the confrontation of police. Yeah. Now it was like, you know, they knew the person. So it was like they were able to defuse these situations and, you know, as a, you know, a model for maybe the entire world, like I'm pretty sure it's Pattinson, New Jersey. Um, you know, maybe that's the way we have to look at things because, you know, that community involvement, which, um, you know, Canadian police used to have a huge Canadian involvement. They still do it to a certain extent, but, not as much like you know there's a small town just north of here and like people used to talk about how like every single night there was people literally walking the beat like yeah. walking the street they come down they pop into businesses how's everything good they don't do yeah. that anymore yep you yeah know, no, so. absolutely a little bit more personal yeah um what was i gonna say they um that nah, wasn't that <laughs> clearly um, but yeah, guys, we do appreciate uh, anyone who's on the police force or fire anything for the emergency service. We do appreciate it, uh, and especially the first responders in the hospitals. So thank you very much for all your service. Uh, guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel to Neighbors, and if you have a request, please put it down below, hashtag my request with the URL link. And don't forget to check out OKSwag.com, punch in two neighbors at the checkout, and you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping and pay no tax. Ryan, yeah. what should these lovely people do next? Like, share, and subscribe, guys. Thank you for sticking around. We know this is a long one, full of stories, <laughs> full of all kinds of stuff, but we really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. That's it for our show. We'll see you next time. Later, guys.